for breakfast, I'm making stuffed biscuit waffles. I'm going to start by scrambling our eggs with a little bit of butter, salt, and pepper. And once it is done, you're going to remove it into a plate. Wipe your skillet clean, and now we are going to make our bacon. I am using turkey bacon, and that's the reason why I added just a little bit of olive oil. Now we're going to remove this into a pan, and we're going to cut it into small pieces. You're also going to need some cheese here. I'm just using a combination of Mexican blended cheese, mozzarella, and Monterey Jack. And now remove the biscuits from the can and open up a biscuit to create a pocket. Stuff with your bacon, egg, and cheese. And don't be shy with the cheese. You're going to need a little bit more than what I'm putting in there. And now you're going to press the edges to seal the biscuits. Repeat the process with the remainder of your biscuits. Please keep in mind that the ingredients that I'm adding on here are just suggestion. Feel free to add whatever that you want inside the biscuits. Now heat your waffle maker according to directions and add the biscuits. I cook mine using the highest setting and this may differ depending on your waffle maker brand. And then you're going to remove it carefully. Don't forget to spray your waffle maker first and now you're going to repeat the process with the remainder of your stuffed biscuit waffles. With the waffles, I am also serving some yogurt. Here I'm just using plain Greek yogurt and I'm adding some vanilla extract and some manuka honey. And for coloring purposes, I'm adding a couple of teaspoons of this blue butterfly pea powder. And I love doing things like this for my kids. It doesn't alter the taste, but I'm trying to show them that food doesn't have to always look a certain way, a certain color, that they can all be delicious. And for fun, I'm also going to add some Birthday Cake Granola by Safe and Fair. And here's the rest of our breakfast. Keep in mind guys, my husband and I had some of those waffles. For their smoothies today, I am adding about 3 quarter cups of milk, 1 cup of frozen cauliflower, 1 cup of carrots cut into small pieces, 1 whole orange that has been peeled, 1 frozen banana, a half a cup of strawberries, and 1 cup of frozen mango with 1 tablespoon of flax seeds. And we're just going to blend this until smooth. And here's their smoothies for today. For lunch, I'm making ramen noodles with ground turkey and broccoli. I'm going to start by mixing the sauce. There's three tablespoons of dark soy sauce. You may use regular soy sauce, but the color and flavor may differ slightly. You also need two tablespoons of oyster sauce, one tablespoon of marin, two teaspoons of brown sugar, and one teaspoon of rice wine vinegar. Combine the sauce ingredients together and set it to the side. Into a wok or deep skillet, boil some water and add your ramen noodles and broccoli. Cook for about three minutes. Then remove, drain, and rinse with cold water to stop the cooking process. Add a little bit of olive oil into the now empty skillet and add your ground turkey and cook until it is no longer pink, breaking it up as you go. Now add some ginger, garlic, and onion and cook for about four minutes. Give it a pinch of salt and some black pepper. Now add your noodles, broccoli, and sauce. You're going to toss to combine. Be sure that you season to taste. I ended up adding a little bit more dark soy sauce and some white pepper. You want to make sure that the sauce has coated all the ramen noodles. And now I'm just placing it onto their plate and I'm going to garnish it with some white and black sesame seeds. This was enough for my kids and myself. I pretty much use one pack of ramen noodles per person. So if you're cooking for four, you might wanna add another pack of ramen noodles and just kind of adjust the sauce a little bit. And here was our lunch. For dinner, I am making barbecue chicken skewers with coleslaw and barbecue roasted potatoes. I'm going to start by making the coleslaw because it needs to sit in the fridge for a couple of hours. For the dressing, I have a half a cup of mayo, two tablespoons of vinegar, two to three tablespoons of sugar, some salt, pepper, a little bit of ground mustard, and some celery salt. You're gonna combine all these ingredients and please be sure that you taste it. And now I'm just going to add the sauce into a 14 ounce bag of coleslaw mix. Make sure that you mix this evenly and please put it in the fridge for a couple of hours before serving. For the chicken, I am using two pounds of boneless skinless chicken thighs that has been cut into bite-sized pieces. Add a couple of pinches of salt and three tablespoons of your favorite barbecue rub. Now toss to combine and I actually added a little bit more barbecue seasoning just for good measure and you want to marinate this for about an hour. In the meantime, I am making my barbecue sauce. Please feel free to use your favorite barbecue sauce. 
Here I have one cup of ketchup, a quarter cup of brown sugar, about a quarter cup of molasses, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon of chili powder, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon each of onion powder, garlic powder, and black pepper, and a little bit of liquid smoke, but that is optional. And now we're just going to cook this on medium low heat and cook until it starts to thicken, about seven to 10 minutes. For the roasted potatoes, as you can see, I have different sizes and different kinds of potatoes because I'm just using whatever I have available. Here I have some russet potatoes and some small golden potatoes. You just want to make sure that you cut them into similar sizes. Now add some olive oil into your potatoes, a couple of pinches of salt, and some barbecue rub. So I ended up adding about one to two tablespoons of barbecue rub. I'm not really sure because I don't really measure this stuff. You just got to go with your guts, you know? And now you're going to cook this for about 12 minutes at 425 in the oven. Flip it and cook it for another 15 minutes. So while the potatoes are cooking in the oven, I'm just adding this chicken pieces into wooden skewers. And please be sure that you soak them first, otherwise they may burn. And if you have little kids and you don't really feel comfortable serving them wooden skewers, just simply cook it first and then remove the chicken from the skewers once it is cooked. Or you can just omit it altogether and just cook the chicken as it is. And now you're going to cook this on high heat for about five minutes. Flip them and cook for another five minutes and brush some barbecue sauce right on top. Remove them from the pan and you're going to repeat the process with the remainder of your chicken skewers. And now place them on a parchment lined baking sheet and cook in the oven for about 10 minutes at 425 degrees and add as much barbecue sauce as you like. And here's the rest of our dinner. I added a little bit of flaky salt on top of the roasted potatoes and some more barbecue sauce. For dessert, I am making brownie Oreo pizza. I'm just using a box brownie mix. The only changes that I'm going to make it instead of vegetable oil, I am going to use butter, same amount. And per box directions, I'm adding one egg, a quarter cup of water, and the butter with a little bit of vanilla. So this may differ depending on which brand that you are using. And now we're just going to combine it. And now I'm going to grab a pizza pan, give it a spray and add parchment paper and cook the brownie per box directions. So I actually made this brownie earlier in the day. I did not make it after dinner. That would be crazy. Um, because we need the brownie to cool down a little bit before we add the frosting on top. For the frosting, you'll need two sticks of butter that has been softened and one container of this marshmallow fluff. I believe they're like seven ounces. Just use the entire box. A half a cup of powdered sugar and some vanilla extract and you're just going to mix this until it is smooth. Alright, so as you can see, someone put their finger on the brownie and I'm just going to grab another pizza pan and flip it because the bottom side is just smoother. Now we're going to add the frosting on top and just spread evenly. And now I am adding some Oreos right on top. I am using the mini Oreos. I just cut them in half. I'm not really sure how much I use, just enough to cover the entire pizza. And now for some fun, I'm going to drizzle some fudge sauce right on top. You can also use chocolate syrup if you like. And there you have it guys, brownie Oreo pizza. I'm telling you, this did not last long. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. Bye.